Eight months ago, we started an analysis of the changing political economic dynamics on the continent. There, were, there was a lot happening, the Arab Spring, the economic recession. This had implications on the support to governance uh, programs in Africa and the existence of governance uh, institutions in Africa. It, had, it was going to have an impact, actually, on some of the key MDGs that we are now celebrating about, health, HIV, AIDS. These are all quite aid-dependent. Aid and the ramifications of, of that, plus some of the social EUs that have been itemized in this conference, um, was, was quite frightening. We interacted with the private sector, with international companies, with colleagues in the UN and elsewhere. There was a high level of frustration amongst the youth, generally among citizens, with the lack of outcomes. Democracy was not leading to the outcomes in employment, in health, and so on. The issue of unemployment is very rife, and the issue of uh, poverty and destitution, desperation around the outcomes around uh, farming, agriculture, and corruption, extremely high. This is even more significant when we look at the younger population, 18 to 25 years. The question of the youth bout actually concerned so much, was so concerning for the private sector in particular, and, and for leaders. Um, particularly based on the fact that the youth were not only unemployed, but unemployable, that they did not have the skills to be employed. So this is essentially our program profile, or uh, let me say our governance priorities going forward. Especially concentrate on youth that are not in education, that are not in employment, that are not in training. We'll couple that up with uh, civil society, deepening the capacity of civil society organizations that we work with to engage the state on, the, on, on issues of the youth. If we are facing an economic crisis in Africa, or sorry, in the world, and Africa is aid dependent to a great extent to deliver on the MDGs that remain, we must increase the capacity for domestic resource mobilization. There are a lot of innovative ways that we could probably do that if we interact with the right institutions. But in addition to utilization, there has to be effective monitoring of those resources. So therefore, we are anchored around strengthening the capacity, the social accountability capacity of civil society, and the capacity of legislature, of the legislature, to play a role in effective accountability in this regard. We must begin to look at things holistically, that health and governance can be related, not that health is simply a standalone issue. Lastly, we look at the capacity of institutions. And here we use what we call the local governance barometer and other barometers. This, the, the, the potential of these instruments is that they bring citizens, they raise awareness among citizens about what their rights and responsibilities are in relation to delivery, particularly at a local level. And they also bring their leaders and citizens together with the private sector and service providers. They define the problem. They arrive at a collective decision on how they should move forward and the capacity statement is developed, and therefore the problem is tackled at a micro level as we want to energize active citizenship. But in order to do that, we need to empower um, communities with knowledge and with the skills, the social accountability skills and the tools to be able to understand what the role of local government is, how they can engage it, and to be able to enable that engagement. Secondly, I'm saying that we recognize that local governance is weak but the assessments have to be done by all stakeholders as a collective. So a consensus-based capacity building approach is what we emphasize. We also recognize that the immensity of the development challenge, particularly in Africa, and especially relating to the youth, is probably the, the biggest, um, one of the biggest challenges. When we talk accountability, can we assume that citizen pressure is sufficient to foster that accountability? Or should we perhaps look at what, are, what has been called developmental leadership, Leadership with a strategic vision, leadership that is able uh, to form coalitions beyond one sector. How concerned are we, if at all, that our efforts at sustainable human development through democratic means may be undermined by clientelism? The state of local governance is appalling, to say the least. It's appalling. Decentralization, fiscal, uh, fiscal and political decentralization are good buzzwords. But unfortunately, on the ground, what we find is that local governance has actually been a hostage of competitive multi-party politics. In some cases, denied resources because local government is controlled by an opposition party. And therefore, the deliverables we are talking about could not be reached. Is this the time? I've heard arguments around developmental authoritarianism, which relates to the East. Um, that it is a problematic for arguments around democracy being the bedrock for development. 
is there something Africa can learn from the East? Thank you very much.